Hello again from Digicore Things. Having finally assembled an initial 6809 based system following the completion of my recent Motorola IO Plus sound card, we should now give the system a bit more thorough testing. My earlier presentations of the 6809 CPU card included testing it with the TMS 919T9 video display card. I also initially tested the Motorola IO card with a simple Hello World program. Both of these tests were run at just the base 1MHz clock speed of the original MC6809 processor. My Motorola I.O. card introduction did include successfully testing both the ACIA and PTM chips, as they are both utilised by the Assisto 9 monitor for serial terminal communication and for enabling breakpoints and single stepping. These initial tests also done at the initial 1 MHz system clock speed. As you'll probably know, the Motorola MC6809 was available in three clock speeds. Firstly was the initial 1 MHz speed, then the 1.5 MHz A version, the MC68A09, finally the 2 MHz B version, MC68B09. Matching A and B peripheral chips for 1.5 MHz and 2 MHz also supported these faster speeds. So the first thing I want to verify is that the cards developed so far and the bus system itself operates at the full 2 MHz speed of the B parts. In addition, I still need to test both the PIA and the SN76489 sound chip functionality of the I.O. card. So first up, I'll ensure we have fully populated our boards of the faster 2 MHz B speed grade CPU and peripheral chips. So let's look at the I.O. card first. And it appears we already have a 68B21 PIA, a 68B50 ACIA, a 68B40 PTM. So the IO card is all ready to go. And the CPU card from memory yeah we included a Hitachi 63B09 CPU chip which is also rated for 2 MHz. Now remembering that the 6809 system uses a divide by 4 clock, we currently have a 4 MHz crystal oscillator installed on the CPU card to provide the 1 MHz system clock. So with all the correct B grade chips in place, we simply need to swap the 4 MHz crystal oscillator for an 8 MHz oscillator to provide the double speed 2 MHz system clock. So let's swap over the crystal oscillator. Let's take out the CPU card again and we can take off the 4 MHz crystal and I have a crystal oscillator, the same format, for 8 MHz. Plug them in and we'll put the CPU card back in the back plane. Then we're ready to power up and see if we're still in business. OK, let's apply power. And we're looking good with an Assisto 9 prompt. Next up, we need to check that our video card still operates with the 2 MHz system clock. So for this test, I've taken our original ROM-based PDP card test code and modified it for running in RAM instead. All that was required was to change the origin address for assembly from F000 to instead be in RAM. I've used address 0100. That is the second page of memory located in the RAM memory space. I've also removed some of the initialization code, which is now already taken care of by the Assisto 9 monitor. So the only initialization I'm doing now is to set up the direct page register to point to this error page. 
Finally, if I scroll to the end of the listing, I've removed the vector table that was being assembled into ROM at FFF0 to FFFF. So we should be all go for assembling this and running it in RAM. So let's transfer the assembled .s19 file across to a CPU card of the assist 9 l command. And run the code with G0100. And we have our existing video test running as expected. With the backdrop colours being updated once every second, instead of once every two seconds as before. This is expected as we had used a simple software loop for the two second delay. We're now running at twice the clock speed. So everything is looking great at 2 MHz. This just leaves the testing of our PIA and the SN764897 chip on our new I.O. card. For this I located a simple Christmas demo program. It was originally written by a Kurt Wurlock for the Creative Vision game console. The Creative Vision was actually 6502 based but it used both a TMS9929 VDP and a PIA connected SN764897 sound generator. It also used a 2 MHz system clock for its 6502 and the SN764489. On our 6809 system, running at 2 MHz, we are also clocking at SN764489 at 2 MHz. For these reasons, the Creative Vision seemed like an ideal candidate for obtaining some existing demo code to base a test on. Although being a 6502 based system, we still need to rewrite everything for the 6809. As we are specifically wanting to test our PIA connected SN76489 sound generator, and we have a TMS9929 based video card, this Christmas demo program seems like a good place to start, without having to entirely reinvent the wheel. Instead, I can utilise some of the 6502 demo's data resources and then dive into rewriting the program logic for our 6809 CPU. Noting also that the 6502 is a little Indian processor, whereas our 6809 is big Indian. Something to keep in mind when porting across data resources. First, I put it across the graphic resources. So there is a colour table .asm, which holds all the data for the colour table for the VDP. And secondly, there is a pattern table, which contains the graphic image. And then I wrote some appropriate 6809 code, reusing my existing VDP routines that I'd already written for our existing test code, with the goal of first getting the Christmas graphics portion of the Creative Vision demo working. Fortunately, the published Creative Vision demo also had a screenshot, so we know what to expect, which will help determine if the graphic image is being presented correctly. Appropriately, for a Christmas demo, it's a Christmas themed scene. So this is the 6809 code, let's take a look at it. So I'm assembling this onto the same entry point of address 0100 reserving the zero page for storage. Then I've got the equates for the VDP address and the VDP VRAM and VDP register addresses. On entry I do the same initialization of the direct page register to point to the zero page. Then we load all eight of the VDP registers from a table below. Then I clear the VRAM and then we set up the VRAM the graphic image resources. And finally, enable the display by setting the display enable flag in register 1. And finally, we just loop forever. If I scroll down, these are the same subroutines that were in the previous test code. So 
So the only changes are really in the are in the VRAM setup subroutine. Where I'm specifically loading the pattern table into the VRAM address allocated for the pattern table. And I also load the color table. And the name table was set up as three lots of zero to FF. This is because we're in graphics mode too. If you want to know more about the use of the name table, color table and pattern table, the TMS9929 chip, then I recommend you read the user manual for the TMS chip. So at the end of the code, we have the eight registers where you load into the VDP, which I've commented to all the modes. So it's graphics two mode, the interrupts are disabled, and the start addresses for the name table, color table, pattern table, etc. are as noted in the comments. Finally, I created a couple of labeled values for, a re for register one, one with the display area enabled, and one with the display and interrupts enabled. Finally I include the pattern table and color table. So let's first reset our 6809. Then we can load this program. And let's see what we get when we run it. G010. And we get just what we were expecting. So that was successful. Once again, this is also confirming we have no issues with our code talking to the TMS9929 VDP at a 2 MHz system clock. Next, after analyzing the Christmas demo code, I noted that the sound output is being generated by an interrupt routine, triggered by the TMS9929's frame interrupt. Our TMS9929VDP's interrupt output is indeed connected to our CPU's IRQ input, so we're all set there. So this is also providing a good opportunity to verify that the MECB interrupt signal and the CPU card's IRQ interrupt input are all functioning correctly. To initially test the interrupt operation, I've decided to first implement a VDP frame interrupt service routine. To drive our previously written test process, it was simply cycling through the VDP pick drop colors. Therefore, instead of using our existing software delay loop, I'll instead make use of our video frame counter and an interrupt service routine to trigger changing the backdrop colour every 50 video frames. On our power system, 50 frames equates to 1 second, with an interrupt every 20 milliseconds. This will test our video card interrupts and the CPU interrupts are all working correctly by first using a previously proven backdrop colour change process, laying the groundwork for subsequently porting across an interrupt driven sound demo. So let's take a look at the code changes that I've made to implement our interrupt driven video backdrop color cycle. For debugging this I also hooked up my scope to the MECB interrupt line so we could observe the interrupt signal being driven low and being released high again once every 20 milliseconds. Now in the code I've added a couple of labels for the Assisto 9 Vector Swap Service, which is service number 9. And I've also got a value for the IRQ code, which is value 12, for the swap function code, which you pass to the Vector Swap Service. Then I've defined a couple of zero page storage locations, one being the frame counter, which will be incremented 
each time we get a frame interrupt. And then I store the backdrop color. Okay, the code entry is the same. Also clear and then set up the VDP VRAM just as before and enable the display. Then we have some new code where I initialize the frame count for a second just for an, an initial pause and then I initialize the backdrop color to 01. Then I call the assist 09 vector swap service to set the interrupt handler code pointing to the interrupt handler. Then I clear the 6809 interrupt mask from the condition code register. And finally, I enable the interrupts on the TMS9921 for the right to register one. And then we're back into our loop forever. So if I scroll forward past the subroutines, which are unchanged, we have the interrupt handler. So every time there's an interrupt, the first thing it does is decrement the frame count. If the frame count isn't zero, we then return. And just before we return, we read the VDP status register, which is required to reset the frame interrupt flag. If we have reached a zero frame count, we reset the frame count back to 50, which is 32 hex. Increment the backdrop color. If we've reached backdrop color 15, we reset it back to 2. And then we write the new backdrop color to register number 7. And once again, return from interrupt. That's all we need to do. So let's again reset our CPU. And transfer the new program. Let's run the code again. G0100. Once again we have success. So we've now proved we have successful video card and CPU card interrupt handling. Now all that remains is the PIA and sound chip test. So finally, I've rewritten the sound functionality for a 6809. Okay, first off, I've extracted two additional data resources as include files. First, there is the sound byte table, which basically contains all of the notes required for our song. I've also included Kurt's original notes. The second file is the frequency table, which contains the frequency words for each of the notes. Again, I've included Kurt's original notes explaining the file. Now let's take a look at the code. Alright, now we have some new equates. First, the PIA address, which is E010. The port address and the control register address. Then I have the Assist 09 entry service, which is number 8 enable us to jump back to the monitor and also as per the last program we have the vector swap service and the IRQ code for the vector swap service. The zero page storage locations have changed a little. We now have a temporary byte for storage. We have a decay count for the decaying volume of each note. Then there's three bytes for each of the three tone generators within the SN76489 chip to hold the current volume of each tone generator. And then we have three bytes which hold the current note which is being played by each tone generator. Finally, I have a 16-bit offset into the sound byte table. Okay, the code entry starts off the same, but after enabling the display, I now set up the PIA. Um, port B is used for the sound chip, so we initialize port B, set the control lines as appropriate to strobe the data into the sound chip. Then I set up an initial decay count, 
we'll initialize some of our storage to zero. Finally, I'll make a call to a subroutine which silences the sound. And as before, we set up our IRQ handler with a call to the vector swap in an SSD9. And again, I clear the interrupt mask on the 6809 and we turn on interrupts. And finally, we had the option of either looping forever if we wanted to just play the song over and over, or I had some code to return to the Systo9 monitor when the song ends, if we decide we only want to play the song once. If that's the case, I then mask the interrupt scan and cause a silent sound routine before I re-enter a Systo9. Okay, these subroutines are all the same for the VDP. Right, we have a new subroutine called Write Soundpoint, which simply writes the byte to the SN76489 and waits for a not busy. Then I have the Sonnet Sound subroutine, which simply turns off all of the channels, including the noise channel, on the SN76489. Then I have the new interrupt handler, which I've fully commented, so you can read through at your own leisure. Basically, we're decaying the volume of all three sound channels, and when the volume is decayed sufficiently, we then play the next note, remembering that the interrupt routine is called 50 times a second, or once every 20 milliseconds. Finally, at the end of the code, we include the two new resource files, the sound byte table and the frequency table. So we're ready for our final test. So let's again reset our CPU and we'll transfer across this final program. Right, and before we run it, let's plug in some sound. And let's go. G G O one O. Awesome. So we have successfully ported the Creator Vision Christmas demo to now have it running on our 689 system. And the sound is awesome. Truly retro. I will note that debugging my code was made super easy with the breakpoint and single stepping facilities of the Assist 09 monitor. I'll upload all three of the demos of Walkthrough to the public MECB GitHub repository. In case you want to take a closer look, even run these tests on your own MECB system. Although some of the routines are duplicated between the demos, I decided not to extract them to a separate common routines include file, just to keep the simplicity of all the code being in one source file for each demo. So we can close out with a final full run through of the Christmas demo music delivered directly from our 6809 system.
that's it. Thanks for watching.